Selamat pagi everyone. Uh, good morning. <coughs> Thanks to attend in this uh, artist talk. That um, I introduce myself. That I am an artist. I born in 1960, and uh, I live in Yogyakarta. But some people maybe they didn't know Yogyakarta, and they say Jakarta. But Yogyakarta is a joke in Jakarta. To make a joke about Jakarta. So many artists in Yogyakarta make a joke about Jakarta because um, they talk about um, decentralization but they live in Jakarta and they talk about um, postmodernism and others but in the real life they they still in central in Jakarta. So I work with uh, many people in Indonesia. I would like to understand about people very much. And sometimes um, we make a gorilla exhibition in Indonesia, like in the rice field in Manduk Temple. In my, my friend uh, Tutanto has a house, and uh, behind of the house, he make the international art exhibition in the rice field. So we will, when we make the exhibition, um, sometimes the police come and ask us about the paper, about the, this is happened uh, before the regimes fall down in 1998. <coughs> this is about, uh, about the, in the middle of 80s. So we make, if artists will make the exhibition or performance, they need 11 stamps for permission in the 11 offices. So we make in the rice field and invite many artists to participate. When the police come, we say this is rehearsal. This is we will send to Jakarta. But after a few days, the police come back again and say this is real performance and exhibition. And we say the journalists make something wrong. They don't understand this is rehearsal, but it's already happened. And when the artist will make the exhibition or performance, they have to make three different proposals. Two fake proposals and one the real proposal. When we make performance in five minutes, in the beginning of five minutes, we have the same scenario, the same, uh, yeah, in five minutes, and after that, that's the, from the real proposal because in five, uh, the policeman will check the performance in five minutes and after that they, they will go on. So there's um, uh, a lot of way uh, in Yogyakarta especially the artists try to, to make the gorilla for the exhibition. And uh, surprise me, the Sultan, uh, the king, support the, the artists. This has happened also um, in the, in the uh, colonial time that the kingdom of Yogyakarta is uh, also for guerrilla, support to guerrilla. And, and when um, in the Suharto, uh, Suharto regime, the kingdom still support the artists. And, uh, but uh, when I studied art in, in Yogyakarta, I, I was born in Jakarta and my teacher uh, still uh, in feudalistic uh, uh, mentality because um, I'm not a polite uh, student. So <coughs> when, I'm, when I was a student, many works rejected by my teachers. <coughs> they said this is not art because not exists in the theory. <coughs> but I work with the with the actual problem today and uh, not become a theory yet. <coughs> so um, <coughs> my friend in my generation like Dadang Cristanto and me and some other artists, we, we make uh, experimental and uh, exhibited also in Australia, like Dadang Cristanto now live in Darwin and some other artists live in Adelaide and also in the States and Europe. 
but I'm, I'm still live in Indonesia. Uh, since 1999, and, uh, with, uh, with, uh, from, uh, what to say, in my life, until 1999, I don't have telephone in my house. So on, only from 1999, I have telephone. Because uh, many black male, if I have telephone, like uh, from the mysterious person to say, I can kill you or I can, I can uh, kidnap you and others. But if I have no telephone, so they cannot blackmail me. <laughs> so I have, I have to go out from the system. When I was a student in art school, I also uh, had a lot of problems with my teachers. And um, from 1980 until 87, and then I dropped out just three months before I graduated. Um, I read from the philosopher, I forget the name, but in, uh, in, the, uh, in the court, the judge said he has to be the death penalty, but he rejected. He need, he want to, to, to drink poison to be dead. But the decision to be dead is from himself. So when I read this book, so I decided to drop out from my art school because I don't think the institution can, can make guarantee that if you are finished from school, you become an artist. I think I become an artist, I want to, uh, from myself, from my heart, from my um, instinct to be an artist. Because uh, most of my friends who finish and graduate from the school, they don't become, they did not become an artist. Even they don't do any research. They just work in the, in the, um, how to say, um, for, it's like cooking, for cooking, in the restaurant, restaurant, in the restaurant, uh, or in the office. But since the beginning from, I decided to be an artist when I was 17 years old. Because I think if I'm an artist, I never retire. Nobody charged me, fired me, <coughs> because I didn't work with any institutions. But <coughs> I got a, a, a big a risk as an artist. But I think anyone uh, have a risk, and I I would like to become an artist. Like if someone is said to be a priest, so I will get the risk. Maybe poor, but not dead. And I. I, f I want to be free as an artist. And the luxury thing to become an artist is I, I have a feeling of freedom. Um, when I was young, I saw some, uh, um, some performances. And I just wonder as a young person to see how artists can criticize the government, can criticize the institution, even they can criticize themselves. I think Ah, when I was young, I dreamed like that. And um, but of course, um, a lot of risk. Like, like you know, in 1995, there is the exception called uh, the Non-Aligned Countries in Jakarta, opened by the president, by Suharto. In the opening, they don't allow me to come to enter to to the exhibition, but I I participate the exhibition. I I exhibit ceremony of the soul. But they put uh, in behind of the building. They scared if Suharto see this work. And uh, two two hours I have to wait in the outside of the building in Jakarta. And uh, after that, they, uh, I I I, uh, I went I I enter with the some tourists together to the other side of the building. And uh, also when I have a problem like this in 1995. That's uh, uh, I exhibit in the Museum of Modern Art. The title of the work is Blooming in Arms. I exhibit uh, seven figures. It's uh, made, made with a chicken, uh, chicken wire and with the camouflage. The Blooming Arms, inspired by the Indonesian government project about to make a greeny environment of Indonesia, to make a lot of plantation in Indonesia, the, the trees. 
So every house has made one tree. The hypocrisy of this is they cut a lot of uh, trees in the forest, in the jungle, to export the wood to other country. And they match, they match the, the forest. So in this work, um, I just make a parody about the green is not a tree but the army uniform. If people look, look at from the sky, maybe Indonesia is a green color, but the green is army uniform. This is the environment we have about militarism in Indonesia. So, at the time David Elliott, the director of Museum of Modern Art, written about the coup in 1965, military coup from Sukarno to, uh, to Suharto. And also about my performance, The Drunkenness of Samar, in the Fred Cafe bar in Oxford. From that time, uh, uh, after one week after the exhibition, the, I got the letters from the Indonesian ambassador in London that I have to withdraw the catalog. Or, if I disagree, I cannot go home to Indonesia. So in 1995, it's a lot of propaganda about the anniversary of 50 years Indonesian independence. Big banners about 50 years independent. But I just surprised in England they still control people and even they want to withdraw the catalog in overseas. But at the time I cannot get uh, um, permission to stay in Europe because in 1995 very strong for the European Econ Economic Community and not allowed to uh, immigrant to live in Europe. So I went to Switzerland. Holland and in England they don't accept me as a immigrant for, for the problem in Indonesia if I cannot go home. So because I want to go home, so I, I, I agree to make signature to the Indonesian ambassador and uh, I agree to withdraw the catalog. Because I think the problem is about the intellectual of security that very often artists get uh, as a victim when the journalists talk like this, like this and they don't care about the artists if they have a problem but uh, when I come back home I got the interrogation in the airport and go to the headquarters but, but uh, Jim Supankat, Indonesian curator and uh, Ibu Edi Sidiawati from the Cultural Education Department helped me for, for this so I can go overseas anymore. <coughs> so for this a matter like Flying Angels, I exhibit uh, in Chemetry Art House with the nets. The title is The Angels Fly uh, Couch on the Trap. Angels Couch, uh, Angels Couch on the Trap. That's the, angel, uh, the angels, Flying Angels inspired by the Flash Gordon story. The Flash Gordon the comic strip already exists before Neil Armstrong arrived on the moon. That to prove people that imagination and inspiration always go forward. It's like hoping, it's like willing and always in the front. Angel itself is inspiration, a feeling of freedom. When I was a student, my teachers tell me that the ideas always follow the concept. So when I did, I kill a lot of ideas because the ideas not has connected with the concept. I have to kill because my, my teacher said I have no responsible I not responsible if my work is connected with the concept. So I make different. I think the concept follow the ideas because the ideas you cannot predict what the uh, inspiration will go. Maybe when you sleep when talk with your other friend discussion maybe appear and if the concept different I think it's okay because the concept just to crystallize the ideas and to me um, like Indonesia have a Garuda the birds with the very strong arms and also the very sharp nail it's not my dream it's my symbol of freedom I have to make a lot of as, as, as the symbol for myself so this kind of 
my symbol for freedom, the angels, the inspiration, and uh, yeah, that's uh, my point. And I have the other words uh, and on the, uh, the downstairs. Thank you. Harry just read my mind, which is another of his talents. So if people like to go down the escalators. And you can sit on those benches with your back to the big floral painting by Michael Lynn and we'll join you downstairs. Maybe uh, some question or... It's up to you. <laughs> okay. I want to talk a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yes, in this, um, I remember in this space in 1993 I exhibit um, uh, Gamelan of Rumor that I exhibit about that place. That's uh, yeah. some Indonesian artists also surprised about my work because I use sound and uh, just question me about why I exhibit the sound. So because I want to make a gamelan and uh, gamelan need the sound, so that's uh, a bit uh, confused about about my, my work, even Indonesian artists. Um, well, now I also exhibit two pieces of this work. One is the offer there, is a um, ceremony of the soul, and and here is a glass vehicles. So the ceremony of the soul, I work with uh, uh, so many people in the Mount Rapi. In uh, Yogyakarta is actually. Uh, created by the mandala system, mandala um, philosophy of mandala that in the north of Yogyakarta is a mountain, is a Mount Merapi and in the south is an uh, ocean. And uh, Yogyakarta is, uh, my city is built by the legend, by mythology. So, the mountain is symbol of male, and the ocean symbol of female. And in the north, in the mountain, we have uh, Sapu Jagat. Sapu Jagat is uh, a guard for the mountain. And in the south, in the ocean, is the Nyai Rorokidul, uh, the queen who lives under the ocean. So that's uh, many people live like in the dream and in the real life. It's like when, pop, when people uh, sh uh, look at uh, uh, the sh shadow puppet, uh, traditional shadow puppet, it starts from um, 9 o'clock in the evening and finish until uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, very often the discussion in Yogyakarta is start from 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, finish until morning. So this method is, is very exciting to me to understand about the system uh, of discussion. Because sometimes people only discussion in one hour or two hours. And in Indonesia, people maybe this is only warming up. It's like in sport, just warming up. And they didn't get the sense, just two hours discussion. But uh, when I have experienced discussion beside the beach, we call Parang Triti speech. <coughs> we discussion and we don't know each other because it's very dark and uh, we only can listen the voice. But at 5 o'clock in the morning, I can see the face of the people who discuss uh, with us. And, uh, and uh, many grassroots in Yogyakarta, uh, many uh, we call the cultural pocket because we don't believe about the central. Uh, we have uh, Taman Ismail Marzuki in Jakarta. They said they are barometer or parameter of the culture and art in Indonesia, but everyone didn't believe it. So everyone make the cultural pockets with the different ideas, with the different community, and uh, very exciting. And some people work with the street children, with the street performance artists, and some work with the alternative like apotikomik, like like a gallery in a public space. So this month is, um, there is six places 
for the artists to make exhibition in the public space. But the, in Jogja, uh, it's very interesting because we have a Sultan Palace, the Karaton, and we have uh, art school, and also um, we have uh, the art community and traditional art in every village. So this is, has interaction between the art and culture and life. So um, when I make the ceremony of the soul, I went to the mountain, uh, Mount Merapi, and something exciting is uh, very close in my hometown, and you can see the lava, you can hear the sound, and sometimes I, I, uh, I go to one place, uh, only four, four kilometers from, from the, 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 the top of the volcano, and if you look at the, the, the volcano, the larva is a concept, music concept. When the lava comes out with the fire and uh, the sound, many people uh, clapping, and, uh, especially in the full moon. So Mount Merapi is very active um, eruption. So the putting live in the near Mount Merapi is uh, between um, uh, danger and beauty all together. So everyone very tense in that kind of life. Because life without danger, I think, um, is uh, like we get lose the sense of life. So um, as an artist, I very often get a trouble, maybe uh, a troublemaker, become a troublemaker. <laughs> but uh, uh, the truth is plural, so sometimes the mistake also a part of the truth. So mistake is also blessing, and uh, very often I learn from from mistakes. If there is no any mistakes, maybe there is no any new theory. So I would work with the phenomenon and uh, like uh, talk again about the ceremony of the soul. I went to the Bondarapi and I met people, and uh, they use hammer and to understand about the stones. And then I, I, uh, the grave diggers carve this work, and uh, I exhibit in Jakarta, and I put the the voice of Suharto in the in the left side, from when he speaks before before he um, fall down from as a president. But I make a loud a loud speed, so it's not really here. And uh, the yellow color of the, of the electric fence is a symbol of the Golkar. Golkar is a Golongan Karya, acronym of Golongan Karya means the, uh, the government party since Suharto in 32 years as a president. Um, um, in the dictatorship of him, he asked to the family who worked in the government, in the civil government, to collect 10 people to, to get uh, the more salary. So every family has to get 10, minimum 10 people. So many teachers in the school ask the student to, to choose a gold card if they want to get the good report. And time by time, Suharto never, never failed because Every year, always get a lot of number of uh, voice, voices of Golkar. And actually, Golkar is from Labour Party, Karya. Golongan Karya means the group of the Labour that take over to the government. So, the, the, in the system, it's become slavery system. Not really, you know, in the good system, anyway. So, um, I work with Pechak driver that inspired me for the glass vehicles, the, the cyclo drivers, and they work really as a slave you know, to transport a people from one place to the other place. But in the night, I feel them like a king in their, in their, in their vehicles. In the night, they sleep there, they sleep in the vehicles as a king 
in the nature. So this is like a paradox between slave and a king, you know, because in the night they belong, it's like the, the city belongs to them. If you ask them to transport you, they don't want to, they just want to sleep. And I, I feel proud about that, that they, they, they have attitude like this. I think this is uh, maybe, thank you very much. Now it's your turn. Who wants to ask any questions? And because we have this problem with this, can I ask you to come forward and share this little stage with Harry and ask your question? I just wanted to know about the fans. I know about the color, but why the fans? Is the movement to stir up the mood of the people or make you think or could you tell us about that? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. So the fans moving like to spread the, the concept of Golka. This is like propaganda, it's like ideology. 75% of education is only propaganda. I always reject about this, uh, this, pro this uh, subject from high school until univers university and if a part of this uh, we call pay impact. It's uh, like to make a brainwashing of you about, about the truth. The truth is come from the government, not from your heart. So I don't want to, to do that because um, if, if I disagree, I don't want to say I agree. This is hypocrite. And uh, my teacher always give me, you know, rap number in rap. And that means nothing is like low, very low. But I don't care because uh, I disagree and the yellow you know like um, in the pedestrian in the all pedestrian for the seller they have to paint the box on the top of what they sell in the yellow color is uh, prohibited to paint with the other color since Suharto so this is we call kuningi sasi to make everywhere yellow and um, and to make a brainwashing of people that this is right. And then in the history of Indonesia, Suharto make uh, another history. He create like Hitler. He create history that, that he's a hero. He's a, he's a very kind Bapak uh, Pembangunan, the man who, uh, you know, for the development is like uh, a father of the development. Uh, to, and how many children now get this brainwashing and how to get away from this is a, another problem. Because when the history, uh, um, like engineering, like social engineering for the children, and the children very strong in the mind. And uh, I think um, it's like a disease, disease. And I think uh, until now, uh, the children still have in their mind I ha of course I have, but uh, as long as people conscious about the matter, I think it's okay. But if they don't conscious, they guess the his Indonesian history is right like that. I think uh, it's very bad for the generation. What's your view on technology? Because I noticed that even within the spiritual of the angels, they have technological elements like computer boards and wires, and also in the piece about the soul, they've each got individual um, technological elements, lights, wires, circuitry. How do you relate that to spiritual? Well, thank you for your question. Uh, well, in the my family, we have uh, Kejawen religion, it's a local religion uh, called animism. So before any religions come to Indonesia, like Buddhist religion or Hindu religion, Christianity and, and uh, Islam, the people has already religion called Kejawen. So in the animism, people believe that everything has soul. And uh, when people ask me about my religion, I said my religion is a fine art. 
because it's more contemporary and the same sense as animism because I believe every artist as an animist they make something from the sense to appear in the existence and as long as they try to put from the sense to existence they are animists in, in my opinion so uh, the electric things in my work and mechanical system is, is also uh, come from this inspiration that uh, everything has soul even electronic even here uh, the one angel is broken the machine and uh, to make one of them uh, a bit uh, uh, relax one of the angel maybe in the next few days uh, can fly again and uh, this is uh, is a natural. Sometimes the art, sometimes the technology also not perfect. And what I want to say that the electronic in Indonesia I use from the uh, recycle electronics from the electric fans and the Chinese alarm, uh, alarm clock and uh, sometimes from the jam radios and others tape recorders. I can buy the new one, but uh, as an animist, if the radio can tell about their story, maybe the radio would say, oh, uh, uh, 15 years ago I, I uh, stay in that family and another year in another family and then go to the market and I buy and make them again alive. So that like animist, animistic uh, beliefs. Not to, to uh, not to, to say I know about technology, but also to invite um, the electric uh, the people, the electricians. So I in Indonesia, uh, in the third world country like Indonesia, um, many electric shops, maybe thousands of electric shops. In my mind, why we, did, we never, as an artist, we never invite them to participate, to create the artwork. How they cannot allow to say about art or culture. So what I want to work with them is, uh, I want everyone can talk about art. So I involve people in the process of artwork. And time by time, my friend who worked with electronics, before they confused, because it's so easy for them to repair this. But I have uh, some more money than, uh, you know, just repair the refrigerator and television and others. I give some more money and they, um, they're happy. It's like playing. Because my work also playing. If you give me a guitar, I say I play guitar. So my work, my job is playing. Because I didn't work in the office. When I was in Japan, <coughs> the institution, one officer in the institution, angry with me because I didn't work. I said I play, I don't work. You know. that's, uh, but for for about the the electronics, uh, that uh, uh, not myself to do it, but my friend to work. Um, I was a bit curious about the roles of gender with the puppets, in particular the angels were all men, and I'm not sure, but I think these ones were women. Thank you very much. Um, in my work, um, very often I work um, with a puppet, the, the inspiration from puppet. Because when I was a student, I feel I'm a cardboard, I'm a puppet. I dropped out from school that uh, at the time my, fr my friend and teachers just surprised because why I drop out from school? Why I get the job? Because I said I'm a puppet. And some of my work always, uh, has connected with the organ from the body and the leg. Very often not in one um, body with the hand and, and uh, legs, but all separately and hanging or or um, uh, separately as a, a two-dimensional shadow puppet. 
and um, this 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 puppet inspired by the wooden puppet called uh, wayang kolek. So in wayang kolek, um, what I like about puppet, there is no boundaries between um, painting, sculpture, and um, other things. If you see the shadow puppet performance traditionally, all together, music, um, theater, visual arts, all together, even they don't never, they never think they will um, make collaboration together because there is no concept about to collaborate between them. And from and the puppet from the, this puppet, I, I uh, you know, when I studied uh, seven years in my art school about modern art, and then I studied uh, about shadow puppet. I think shadow puppet more contemporary than what, what, what I learned from the art school. Because um, in 1980s, it's not allowed for the painter to talk about sculpture, or the sculpture talk about, about theater and others. <clears throat> so in the beginning of 1990s, I make a project uh, to make uh, you know the, the painter. Some painters make uh, some painters make a music, and some musician make a painting exhibition, and some people from theater they um, they, they uh, uh, make uh, some sculpture. So at the time, some people angry because why the musician can make painting, but I look at on television many. People who has money and a hobby about painting, they can exhibit their work and open by minister, but they don't angry with them. Why they angry with the musician who exhibit the painting? And from 1990s, I become a troublemaker because they know this is from my ideas. And uh, but today is a uh, is a uh, normal. It's a normal. Uh, no boundaries anymore about about this. And uh, as a puppet, I uh, also a puppet. So in 1993, I, I make performance here called the chair. The chair is uh, about uh, a king and a puppeteer behind the screen, and the puppeteer become a puppet in the front of a king in the story of a chair I performed in 1993. Is, is it? A problem that enough people can come and see your work because they're afraid. They perhaps are afraid. I think we'll have to ask you to come forward. Otherwise, I'll just have to repeat the question, and maybe my translation will be so good. Thank you. Is it a problem that um, you can't get enough people? You can't get enough people. Uh, a problem. You can't get enough people to um, come to your exhibitions because they're afraid of the repercussion of actually being seen, to be looking at your work, which is uh, contentious. Um, politically, um, problem. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. That um, uh, you mean the people in Indonesia or here? people coming to galleries in Indonesia to see your work and be seen looking at it because it's politically um, not correct? In Indonesia, yeah. So in, the, in Indonesia, some, very often, uh, before the opening exhibition, uh, the police come and ban, ban the, they close the exhibition. That's a habit in Indonesia, uh, uh, before the opening is a ban or censorship the performance and uh, sometimes you know like uh, last last year um, my friend made an exhibition about the new nudity and in the opening and at the same time also closed the exhibition so the painting has to face to the wall and so people cannot see anymore in the opening the, there is an announcer to say this is opening and also to close the exhibition and um, some people understand about about the works with the political issue, but the problem is about the authority who never knows about arts. 
they can close, they can say this is bad to people, this is uh, fair, uh, not good for people. But I think in Indonesia, uh, the government make a project of the, the project of stupidity. It, this is happen in the school, in the cultural uh, institutions. This project of stupidity is uh, uh, not make people aware, not, not make people conscious, not people wake up from what's going on. And they artists is very dangerous to, about this. And uh, some uh, non-government organization and artists like uh, Tarim Padi and Apotek Comic and some other institution that we make uh, art in public space not only in the gallery because gallery can close but in the public space how to close because no door there is no door only the street the road they cannot close the road and we make in the different places for, for this for this uh, art as uh, connecting with uh, what's going on and we saw in the parliament house uh, they don't, they don't do anything, they're just thinking about their chair, about their position. And people who, who close the exhibition, they actually they just care about themselves. So always the power of authority has connection with the feeling of scare. So the government who very, very angry or very powerful, in the sense they are very weak because they scare about themselves. I, I should just say that there was a, an exhibition band, there's been a couple, there was one band in Surabaya at the exhibition of uh, our friend Mogliono. I was fortunate to be there and even on the night when the exhibition was closed, many people came and there was the most lively discussi with everybody contributing. It was an extremely uh, remarkable and wonderful occasion and the very first question that someone wrote was in Indonesian, Apa Akinya Komadeka An, what is the meaning of independence? What is the meaning of freedom? So, very, very strong, as you're saying. So, I think the artists are strong. I think Harry's been on his feet now for nearly two hours <laughs> talking to several groups. So, unless there's a very urgent question, perhaps I'd ask you to thank him so much again.